good evening everyone good evening children welcome to dcb board surya pet and command district online classes this is sucharita tgt social studies telangana model school and junior college atma kuras surya pet before entering into the session i would like to thank our devo sir sri p madan mohan sir for giving me this golden opportunity i would like to thank everyone who strived to took up this initiation of dcb youtube channel so children i hope everyone are safe and fine at home now we are going to start the session yeah our topic today our topic is hydrosphere the unit 3 of the 9th class so before i start my session i want to define what is a realm the region a really a region or a sphere or a area or any of the primary biogeographical regions of the earth together is called as a realm the earth surface consists of the both land and the water as we know i want to ask a small question to you that where, what is earth so probably you'll answer me that it is a planet how many planets are there eight planets are there in the solar system but the earth is the only planet which has a source of life where we see the life which is existing on it so the earth is again divided into two parts what is that both land and the water the blanket of air surrounds the earth so that is called as the atmosphere and it is inhabited by the living organisms plants and the animals this is called as a biosphere all these animals that is land air water and the living organisms make up the constituents or the realms of the earth so all these four together are called the constituents or the realms of the earth now what is the realms of the earth we are going to learn about the earth sometimes is referred as the blue marble or the blue planet or the watery planet or the terra or gaia why i am saying here is blue marble when you observe the globe you see the major part of the globe is covered with the blue color that's why it is called as a blue marble or the blue planet or the watery planet and this is the third closest planet to the sun the densest planet in the solar system and the largest of the solar system's four terrestrial planets what are those four terrestrial planets mercury venus earth mars among these four the earth is the largest one and it is the third closest planet to the sun and and the only celestial body known to accommodate life so just now we have been learned that this is the only planet where we have the source of life where the life exist so here the realms what does the realm mean just now we have been learned how many realms are there there are four realms of the earth one atmosphere atmos it says about the air which is surrounding the earth surface that is called as a atmosphere you are going to learn in this uh, in the next chapter and lithosphere you have been learned about this chapter before itself now hydrosphere so first before that lithos mean the hard crust which is situated or located on the earth surface that is called as a lithosphere what is hydrosphere hydro itself says that it is water which we listen in the science in the physics and the chemistry sometimes h2o will be saying so that is hydro so hydro mean water and when it comes to the last that is biosphere 
So bio itself says that all the living organisms, plants, animals, human beings, insects, whatever are all the living organisms which are found on the earth are coming under the biosphere. Now, the same, the four realms of the earth which we are, which we are going to learn in the form of the different lessons here. So, first is atmosphere, second lithosphere, third hydrosphere, and the fourth is biosphere. Yeah, now when you observe the realms of the earth, what do you observe here? We observe the first, the in, inside structure of the earth. This you will be learning in the form of a lesson. Okay, what are the internal parts of that earth? All that you are going to learn. But our topic today is the realms of the earth. What are the limbs? Just now we learn that realm is the area or a region or a place, particularly which is consisting of the biogeographical nature. At most, just now we learned, which is related to the air, lithos, the hard crust or the stone, stone structure, hydro, the whole water, all together, including this echo, echo mean all the plants, vegetation, trees, shrubs, etc., whatever are found on the earth, that is our planet, that all comes under this biosphere. So, how many realms are there? Four realms are there. Now, what you are going to learn about? So, a small glance or a small definitions of the all the four realms. Lithosphere. The lithosphere is the rigid outermost shell of a rocky planet defined on the basis of the mechanical pro properties. So just now we learned that it is a rigid. Rigid means strong. Outermost shell. What it is? The rocky planet which consists of the different types of rocks. Okay. That hard crust which is present on the earth is co totally comes under the lithosphere. And where does it comprise? On earth, it comprises a crust and the portion of the upper mantle that behaves elastically on time scales of thousands of years or greater. So this has been formed long, long ago. The outermost shell of a rocky planet defined on the basis of the chemistry and the min mineralogy is a crust. So we learned about the different minerals which we learn in the chemistry. So this the hard structure which is present on the earth's surface, a rigid outermost shell which is present in the crust, upper mantle, this all together is called as a lithosphere. Coming to the hydrosphere, it is physically, physical geography describes the combined mass of water found on, under and over the surface of a planet. This includes water in liquid and the frozen forms in the groundwaters, glaciers, oceans, lakes and streams. So hydro, just now we learned what does the hydro mean? Water. Where is this water present? In, through our, on the totally on the surface of the earth. How it is present? Sometimes it is present in the form of glaciers. It is in the form of oceans or it is also in the form of lakes and the streams. And the saline water is 97, account for 97.5% of this total amount. If we take the total hydrosphere 100%, among that 97.5% comes under the saline water and this saline water which we see in the sea and the oceans. So that's why when you observe the globe or the earth, you find more blue, the blue color. The blue color indicates the water. And very less fresh water is there in our, on our earth's surface. And that fresh water is also in the form of ice and the permanent snow cover in the Arctic and the Antarctic regions. And in the mountainous regions. Mountainous regions like our Himalayas which is covered with the snow or the ice. So this fresh water is very less. That's why we have to conserve the water. We have to use the water how much is necessary for us for us we should not waste the water because the water is very precious once we waste it it doesn't come back so children please don't waste the water next topic 
atmosphere what is atmosphere just now we learned that it is a layer of gases surrounding a planet or the other material body of the sufficient mass that it is held in the place by the gravity of the body an atmosphere is more likely to be retained if the gravity is high and the atmosphere's temperature is low earth's atmosphere which is mostly nitrogen also contains oxygen used by the most organisms for respiration and carbon dioxide used by the plants algae and the cyanobacteria for the photosynthesis also protects living organisms from genetic damage by the solar ultraviolet radiation so as we have been learned about the ozone layer and in the many times we heard about it that ozone layer is protecting us from the solar's ultraviolet rays x rays which we harm us and what is this atmosphere consists of it consists of the different types of gases but especially the atmosphere consists of mostly the nitrogen and it also consists of the oxygen as we know the oxygen is very important for our or more organisms all the living organisms which are living on the earth and we inhale oxygen and we exhale carbon dioxide and this all exhaled of carbon dioxide is used by the plants algae and cyanobacteria when in the process of the photosynthesis and what does it gives us it gives us the oxygen it takes in a carbon dioxide and it gives us oxygen now the next last topic case of prelims of the earth is biosphere bio itself says all the living organisms which is present on the earth's surface or on the earth the biosphere is the global sum of all the ecosystems it can also be termed the zone of life on earth a closed system and largely self regulating by the most general biophysiological definition the biosphere is the global ecological system integrating all the living beings and their relationships including their interaction with the elements of the lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere so when we saw that pie chart we observed that the biosphere it is having the interaction with all the elements of lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere so just a glance or a small uh, information about the four realms of the earth few information and in this four topics we are going to learn in detail in the form of one one lesson so today i want to ask you a question what do you drink when you feel thirsty probably you say water yes water water is available just now we learned that it is available very fresh water is very less percentage is available we have to use it you have to conserve it very carefully now we are going to enter into our topic today's topic is the hydrosphere so what does this hydrosphere mean the realms of water is called hydrosphere okay so the realms of the water so it is saying about the area about the area where the water is found on the total earth it is a derived from the greek word called huder which means water okay so this hydro have been derived from the greek word huder which means the water it comprises various sources of water and the different types of water bodies like rivers lakes seas oceans so what does it consists of the all the water so it may be present in the rivers lakes seas oceans tanks streams etc some part of the water is found deep down under the earth among rocks okay so some of the rocks consists of holes such type of rocks are called as pervious rocks and the rocks which does not have the pores or the holes are called as the impervious rocks so that water is absorbed or kept in, inside that rocks pervious rocks impervious rocks so not only that underneath the earth among the rocks so that's why when we go for the digging of the bore well sometimes in between we get the rocks but afterwards we get the source of water that source of water underneath the rock is called as a aquifers the layer of water which is found underneath the rocks at a certain depth is called as a hydrosphere now we are going to see the picture 
the hydrosphere what does it say it is a total amount of water found on the earth whatever the water total amount of the water which is found on the earth is called as a hydrosphere see the water on the uh, water on earth see if you observe the earth as just now i told why we call our earth as a blue planet or the watery planet so if you observe we see the more blue color this whole blue color is a hydrosphere and this green and the yellow color which you are observing here is a uh, continents this is south america and this is a north america okay so try to understand now I'm going to just now as I told you that the whole water 100% is divided into two groups. One 97% of, of saline water and only 3% of fresh water. This is the whole 100%. And this again 3% 79% is under the glaciers and the ice caps. And accessible surface fresh water just to surface fresh water which we are founding on the earth is only one percent and the ground water is 20 percent okay so we are bringing out this ground water towards the onto the surface by artesian wells or the bore wells before we used to depend only on the artesian wells but now every person is digging the bore wells and we are bringing out the ground water and this ground water again is divided into 52 percent lakes 1% water within living organisms, 1% rivers, water vapor 8% and soil moisture 38%. See how it has been divided. This is the whole water, this is the fresh water and that ground water again is divided in this way. So this lakes is called as a surface water. So ground water is divided into two parts again. One is surface water and one is underground water. Underground water which we dig it out and surface water lakes ponds streams rivers all these are called as a surface water okay now coming to the hydrosphere so as we have been learned hydro water so what the water how the water is covered 71 percent of the earth's surface is covered with the water only 29 percent of the earth's surface is covered with the land and that 29 percent of the land is again divided into seven continents and this 71 percent of the water is again divided into five important oceans as we know the largest and the deepest ocean is the pacific ocean second largest atlantic third largest indian fourth is antarctic and the fifth is arctic but some scientists say that antarctic ocean is the combination of the indian ocean and the pacific ocean and the water of atlantic ocean but some says it is a separate ocean and it is surrounding the antarctica continent and some scientists says uh, arctic ocean as a sea but it is not a sea uh, some say some scientists say that it is a ocean so as per the area or the volume the arctic ocean is the smallest and the pacific ocean is the largest and water covered 70 percent of the earth's surface it is vital for all the known forms of life on earth 96.5 percent of the planet's water is found in the seas and oceans just now we have been seeing and 1.7 in the groundwater, 1.7 in glaciers, in the ice caps of the Antarctica and the Greenland, a small fraction in other large water bodies, and the 0.001% in the air as the vapor or the clouds formed of solid and liquid water particles suspended in the air and the precipitation. So now we are observing the table. Here it shows the percentage of the total water where it is present. So okay. So this is the saline water and this the remaining whole comes under the fresh water. Now, there is a cycle. In general, in the seventh class, we learned this cycle as the simple words water cycle. The same water cycle is also called as the hydrological cycle. So it is a circulation of water in the different forms, liquid, solid and gaseous. 
liquid the water which we see in the form of lakes streams oceans water etc solid in the form of the ice caps and the glaciers gaseous when we boil the water the water vapor comes out when it, uh, that is called as a gaseous stage so the uh, water is in the form of three different forms it also refers to the continuous exchange of water between the oceans atmosphere land surface subsurface and all the living organisms so what it is saying it is an exchange continuous exchange of water so it is exchanging so within the cycle it will be rotating among itself that's why it is called as a cycle and this hydrological cycle is sometimes expressed as rf equal to ro plus et what is rf rf means rainfall which includes all types of precipitation and this precipitation may take place in the form of rain fog dew hail mist etc ro is runoff water after the rain falls we see the water floating towards the low lying areas that is coming under the runoff and what is the et et is evapotranspiration means evaporation and as well as transpiration so what is transpiration the water or the moisture which is present in the plants trees all the vegetation from the stems leaves all is absorbed in the form of the evaporation that is called as a transpiration so there are six stages in the water cycle what are they first evaporation next transpiration third condensation fourth precipitation fifth runoff and the sixth is groundwater so in general we know since our sixth class we are learning about the evaporation in general we say the water changes into water vapor that is called as the evaporation transportation what is transported here we are going to learn about each and every topic in detail so this is the hydrological cycle if you observe that how this evaporation is going on from the vegetation from the streams from the soil oceans all this just now we learned transpiration means from the plants and the all the trees this is whole called as the evaporation so after evaporation what does it form transportation of the water went away now cloud formation after cloud formation it condenses and it comes to us in the form of the precipitation so the runoff water which is floating on the surface this is a lake so the water which percolates percolates means sink or sunk into the soil so where we find good vegetation there the water percolates and there we have the good source of the ground water and this large structure is the ocean so most of the evaporation takes place from the seas and the ocean because they are come, uh, covered with the thousands of kilometers so this is also the picture from our textbook which says about the hydrological cycle here if we observe the evaporation is going and the with the evaporation the cloud is formed this is a transpiration mean the evaporation from the all the trees and the plants all together forms the condensation here means the formation of the clouds and here the formation of the after the formation next comes to the precipitation so the precipitation is in the different forms so that water which comes to us in the form of rainfall is seen in the runoff water it comes and joins into the river and then it goes and joins into the sea or the ocean so subsurface outflow this is a soil water so from the soil also the water is absorbed and infiltration so underneath also whatever the water which is present underneath the rocks and the soil so when we observe in especially in the summer season wherever the water is there that all evaporation takes place why when the temperature is more the evaporation is more so this is also one more picture to make you clear enough that how this goes on ocean evaporation it is going into the air then 
Transpiration also is going into the air and then it forms a condensation. Condensation in this condensation, clouds are formed and it comes back to us in the form of precipitation. Percolation means the water sinks into the water, into the soil and it is a ground water. So this is also one more picture to make it clear enough. Now comes what is evaporation. Evaporation is the process of a substance in a liquid state changing to a gaseous state due to an increase in temperature or pressure. Evaporation is a fundamental part of the water cycle and is constantly occurring throughout nature. So what is evaporation? Just now we spoke that it is the process in which the liquid stage is changing into the gaseous stage. The water is changing into the water vapor. And this is a fundamental part. If the evaporation is not there, then there is no water cycle. That's why it is a very important part. When evaporation takes place, then only the remaining process goes on. So evaporation is a process by which water changes from the liquid to a gas or the vapor. When it is changed, when you observe, if we keep any bowl with the water, if we make it hot, then you observe the water boils at how many degrees? 100 degrees Celsius. And, but actually, it actually begins to evaporate at 32 degrees also. That's why when you see the temperature at the 32 degrees also, we observe the evaporation. It just occurs extremely slowly. So how the process goes on? It is slowly. As the temperature increases, the rate of evaporation also increases. So just now I explained you. When temperature is more, the rate of evaporation is also more. In the summer, the temperatures are more, so rate of evaporation is more. Winter, temperature decreases, the rate of evaporation also decreases. The amount of evaporation depends on the temperature and it also depends on the amount of water there is to evaporate. So, it depends on the temperature and it depends on the amount of the water which is present over in that place. And where do this evaporation occurs? When do it occur? It occurs every day, both in the natural and the man-made environments, everywhere on the surface of the earth. Okay, evaporation occurs most often in the oceans around the world because the oceans cover a vast majority of the earth from the poles to the equator, from the top to the bottom, from poles to the, from the north pole to the equator and the equator to the south pole so wherever the oceans are covered with the vast majority so that's why the evaporation takes place more in the oceans and precipitation also will be more or the condensation also will be more in the same oceans only and if you know the salt is extracted which we call it as a common salt which is extracted from the sea water by allowing the water to evaporate over long periods of time. So they will keep that water in a particular place to evaporate in a long period of time then the sea water evaporates only salt is left which is sodium chloride which we are eating in our food every day. Now transpiration is a process of water movement through a plant and its evaporation from aerial parts such as leaves, stems and the flowers. Water is necessary for plant but not only a small amount of water taken up by the roots is used for the growth and the metabolism. So every living organism needs the water. So the transpiration means the absorption of the water from the leaves, stem and the flowers. That is called as the transpiration. So it is a part of the evaporation. So transpiration is a part of the evaporation. So evaporation throughout the world in the month of the July. So if you observe, you see the different colors where the evaporation is more and where the evaporation is less. Based on the colors, you can identify them. This is evaporation in the month of the December throughout the world. Now, the definition of the transportation. So what is a transportation? In general, we see moving from one place to the other. What is moving here? The water is moving from one place to the another. That is, in the form of evaporation, it is changing from the water to the water vapor. So this transportation also consists of the 
sea breeze and the land breeze also where we see the different changes in that region so the water earth's water cycle began about 3.8 billion years ago so when did this water cycle start or began 3.8 billion years ago when rain, rain fell on a cooling earth forming the oceans the rain came from the water vapor that escaped the magma in the earth's molten core into the atmosphere so whatever the water which have been changed into the vapor which is coming back to us in the form of rain is falling on the earth and it is forming into the different forms of resources of water to us so as i told that the sea breeze which takes place in the daytime okay so the warm air moves towards the uh, ocean or the sea and it comes back in the form of cool sea breeze when we observe the land breeze so this land breeze is going towards the sea and the warm air is coming down okay so the cool land breeze is going towards and the warm air is coming back and again it gets cooled in the night so the sea breeze and land breeze are the part of the transportation not only that the water is moving into the air or the atmosphere to condense now definition of the condensation when molecules of the water vapor return to the liquid or the solid form they create cloud droplets that can fall back to the earth as rain or snow a process called condensation so the water vapor which is coming back to us in the form of liquid or the solid form that is called as a condensation so in generally we say the transported water vapor eventually condenses forming the tiny droplets in the clouds so this is the condensation mean the water vapor is changing again back into the water it may be in the form of liquid or the solid form so this is the formation of the clouds and which we observe because when the clouds form then only we get the rainfall now definition of the precipitation when warmed by the sun the water on the surface of the oceans and the fresh water bodies evaporates forming a vapor water vapor rises into the atmosphere when it condenses means cools down forming the clouds then it falls back to the ground as a precipitation so when does it happen this water have been changed into the water vapor that is the droplets of water that droplets of water will increase its weight when it is unbearable when the weight of the droplet have been increased then the water will come back to us in the form of the precipitation so the precipitation may be in the form of snowfall if you observe this picture this is totally the snowfall which we can't see in our telangana region but uh, we can see a little uh, uh, snowfall in the northern part that is a jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh punjab delhi and the remaining other forms of the condensation dew so this we see this fog dew this is dew this is fog and uh, mist clouds all this also are the part of the uh, condensation so which we see observe this dew when the frost early in the morning in this winter season if you see any leaf or the trees or the petals of the flowers we find the droplets of the water that is called as a dew and this which we see this is called as a fog because these are the different forms of the condensation which comes to us in the form of the precipitation now definition of the runoff what is runoff runoff is a part of the water cycle in which the water flows over the land a surface water rather than be absorbed into the ground water or evaporating runoff appears in uncontrolled surface streams rivers drains and the sewers so where do this water the water which have been come to us in the form of rainfall will form into the runoff water where do it go it forms small streams and the streams will join into the rivers and they then join into the sea or the ocean 
Runoff is the water that is pulled by the gravity across the land surface, replenishing ground water and surface water as it percolates into an aquifer or moves into the river, stream or the watershed. So this runoff water is divided into two types. One is a ground water, so which we can't see underneath the soil or the earth's crust and which we can see is the river, stream and the watershed. So some percolates, percolates means sunk or sink into the soil. So that place, the layer or the place where we find the water is called as the aquifer. Runoff may be classified according to the speed of the appearance. Not only the uh, two types of surface and underground, based on the speed also, it is appearing appearance after the rainfall or melting snow as direct runoff or the base runoff and according to the source as surface runoff or the storm interflow or the groundwater runoff. So these are the different types of the runoffs which are classified based on the speed of the appearance and on the flow. Now if you observe the picture this runoff water have been joining into the lake or the stream or a pond or a, a river. So this is the runoff. Now definition of the groundwater. Groundwater forms when the water from the surface seeks into the ground. This process is called recharge. So this water which percolates into the soil or the ground this process is called as a recharge means we are bringing out through the bore wells but again the rain water which is percolating into the soil is recharging that aquifers that's why we are able to get the water every day when we on it we are using it for the different purpose the water is able to move underground through the rock and the soil due to the connected pore spaces as i told you we have uh, some Rocks consist of the pores. Those pore, uh, rocks are called as the pervious rocks and which does not consist of pores are called as the impervious rocks. Not only through the rocks, through the soil also it percolates. Groundwater is a water that exists underground in the saturated zones beneath the land surface. The upper surface of the saturated zone is called as the water table. Okay, So this upper surface of the saturated zone is called as the water table. And the, through this water table, we can see, which we have been learned in the seventh class, that how this water table helps us to know that the well is going to dry in the summer or not. It fills the pores and the fractures in the underground materials such as the sand, gravel and other rock, much the same way that water fills a sponge. So when any water has been dropped on the any ground, will keep the sponge on it. So the total sponge, wherever the space is there, that will be absorbed in the same way this water is absorbed in the soil, in the sand, in the gravel where the place gravel is there and rocks everywhere it is absorbed. Groundwater is water that exists underground in saturated zones beneath the land surface. The upper surface of the saturated zone is called as a water table. And the groundwater flows naturally out of rock materials or if it can be removed by pumping in useful amounts. The rock materials are called as the aquifers. Just now we spoke about the topic we have been discussed. So this is the groundwater which you observe where. Here I want to say that this is called as the vegetation where we find different trees, shrubs, plants. Wherever we have the more vegetation there the recharge area is more means the water percolates more and there the underground water will be more. So that's why we call it as a recharge. Okay, so that's why we have to give importance to the vegetation to have the good source of underground water and to have underground water in every place or in every home, mainly towns or cities or villages, every house should have a harvest pit. By that we can recharge our water sources in the aquifer. Now, up to now we learned about what is the realm. Four uh, realms of the earth and 
the specially topic about the hydrosphere now we are going to learn about the relief features which are found on the earth's crust so as we have been learned that the earth is divided into two eco uh, two important parts that is the continental landmass and the ocean basins these two comes under the first order of the relief okay so the broadest landform scale is divided into continental land masses which include all the crust above the sea level that is a 30 percent earth surface and the ocean basins which include the 70 percent of the earth surface second order what does the second order says about second order consists of the mountain ranges plateaus plains lowlands etc and uh, it consists of mountains the second order is the important one is mountains plains plateaus okay and third order of relief what is the third order of relief consists of it consists of individual collectively it consists of the balconos glaciers valleys rivers flood plains lakes marine terraces beaches dunes desert forest etc so all these comes under the third order of the relief now we are going to see the first order of the relief so these are the continents and this is the ocean the blue colors are the oceans and the seas so those are the big and the vast like continents and the ocean river uh, ocean basins second order second order consists of just now we spoke that it is a result of the divergence of the plates and other endogenic forces this constructive forces led to the formation of many relief features on the earth so what are those relief features which have been formed is the uh, mountains plateaus plains and the lowlands are formed based on the ocean basins continental rises slopes abyssal plains mid oceanic ridges submarine canyons and the trenches this is in the ocean and this is in the continent mountains plateaus plains and the lowlands these all comes under the second order of the relief features third order of the relief features land and the water features so here we find glacier valley lake volcano plateau canyon the world famous canyon is the colorado which is in the north america grand canyon of colorado we say desert the largest desert in the world sahara river delta peninsula archipelago island strait it is a passage or a way in between two lands and the inlet between two in, uh, land a small inlet of water and this is the basin and mountain range these all comes under the third order of the relief now up to now whatever we have been learnt the four realms of the earth hydrosphere hydrological cycle and its stages and the relief features in the next session or the class we are going to learn about the relief of the ocean salinity of the or sea or the salinity of the ocean now so i thank you everyone I'm